it was a failed experiment to like just see what happens if you move halfway across the country on a whim it didn't last very long it was like two and a half years i made it i think congratulations for doing something where at least you did it you failed but like (laughs) (laughs) you fucking blew it listen you i can't express enough how terrible that went for you it was awful but hey you know you gave it a shot well, howdy, cowboys, cowgirls, and cow people. Cows, too. Uh, all cow varieties are welcome here at a Comedy Advice Podcast. My name is Stefan Satani, and I am here to make you smear your day with laughter and chuckles and giggles and all sorts of vibrations of the vocal cords. That's what I'm really here for, those good vibes. And I'm going to keep those good vibes going the whole episode, especially with a good vibe assistant, Casey Flesh, my special guest, comedian, he's touring all over the country. He's got some dates coming up. Check the show notes. It's like the little glove compartment of the episode that we're driving in together. And no, we're not there yet. We will be soon. Casey Flesh, hilarious comedian. Be sure to follow him. See him live if you can. And don't forget about little old me, the driver of this vehicle. And uh, I've got some shows coming up. 10 19 october 19th tuesday 7 30 at the house of comedy trash or treasure hilarious show where i bring on comedians that argue whether topics like almond milk online dating costco etc are trash or treasure so it's a fun time tickets are going to be in the show notes perhaps if it's on the website but if it's not then house of comedy keep keep your eyes just keep listening to the episodes instead of just listening to this one eat all of the french fries instead of just picking and be like oh i'm not that hungry and then you just pick a french fry of your friends buy your own french fries and by buy your own french fries i mean just listen to the podcast it's free it's absolutely free you got to do nothing except invest in some headphones unless you want to listen in a public place and then spread the joy and good vibes to others then please be my guest be my guest put your phone speakers to the test have the people staring at you as I'm singing this song. Yes. Oh, okay. We made a little ditty together. Oh, I'm bonding. But other than that, follow me on Instagram at S Satani and at a comedy advice podcast. I'm also reigniting. Do you hear that? That's the new Facebook group starting back up again. So it's not new, but it has new stuff. And I want to be able to be more engaged with you guys i feel like you know i get these reviews and these comments and dms and they're like you never listen to me stefan and i'm like well you're not on the podcast so i can't but how can i how can i listen to you guys so i have the facebook group there's going to be a lot of engaging stuff on there instagram if you want to follow me on there we can comment we can like each other's shit you know we can (laughs) emojis and stuff because that's what all anybody does anymore it's just like clap 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 or it's you know the the prayer one or the hearts the flames i like the flames just i like to heat up people's pages they call me the forno that's italian for oven because i make it hot that's right oven that's like the least sexy temperature riser but that kind of fits with me so it's a match oh little pun there anyway I think I just got a hair in my on my tongue. So that might be an omen to zip my lip and let you listen to past Stefan and Casey Flesh. So here it goes. Pretty good. By the way, don't be alarmed. I hope it didn't make it awkward. I'm just, I might not use all of this, but just in case there are any gold nuggets in the in our hot talk. Oh, cold no. talk. What who knows? I don't know. Cold open. That's what I believe it is. You know what? But I like hot talk better. So okay. hot, maybe a yeah, hot open. I do like I do like hot talk. Hot talk <laughs> sounds pretty good. I did a lot of hot talk in high school, I think. <laughs> you know, the pandemic was troublesome for me, so I had to do some hot talk for work. So I had to, <laughs> yeah. I was I was my, a sex my worker. Insurance, my insurance only covers the first half of hot talk and then anything <laughs> after 30 minutes. My copay is uh, through the roof. Oh, God. Yeah, I need Aflac for that second half of Hot Talk. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs>
<laughs> oh god well casey by the way your tattoo is stunning by the way oh thank you thank you yeah it's uh it's a uh, the only part of it that has color i've got the rest under here that doesn't have any color yet but uh, yeah that's a big old train there for uh my grandpa my grandpa really liked trains so i got a got a big locomotive on there that is so cool my father was an engineer uh for the oh, santa really? fe railroad yeah. yeah that's so cool yeah that's yeah, awesome yeah so my my grandpa had one of those like model train towns that like took up like his whole basement you could like stand in the middle and like look around everywhere it was wild it was so cool oh that's really cool see my dad didn't like to bring his work home so we didn't have any such thing but sure, he sure. took he, he took us well he took me and it was terrifying going to the train because we went up and that was at the time i think that was l mid 90s so okay. they weren't even giving the engineers ear protection so we're oh, just Jesus. going on board it's <laughs> of so not. loud yeah it's so <laughs> loud and he ended up getting tinnitus tinnitus i don't know how to pronounce it but he ended up who cares he can't hear you either way <laughs> Yeah, exactly. He just he he sees how it, it yeah, it's pronounced. He's like, whatever. Something's that's, going on. That's fine. That's fine. But um he yeah, he ended up getting that. Not so bad, but just yeah. bad enough that he can't distinguish the signals yeah. from the loud noise of the train. So he ended up getting <laughs> holy crap. Yeah, paid disability. But when I tell people he got disabled on the railroad, they're like, oh my God, did he yeah, get run no, over? No. Did he lose a leg or something? I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah, he, well, he was uh, out there. He was tying this lady to the tracks and then the train came. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was some, uh, he was up to some evil shenanigans on the Santa Fe <laughs> Railroad. Rail rail <laughs> Just messing around. Oh, that's awesome. Though. <laughs> so you got to, did you ever get to like drive a train then, so to speak? I wish, dude. I wish. But unfortunately, I was like, uh, I think I was around eight years old. Sure, so he, sure. he like let me hold the levers, the steering yeah, wheel. Yeah, I can't yeah. even remember yeah. what it was, but uh, yeah, sure. yeah, he, he let me, he just let me, maybe there was a little, a fake thing that I was doing, but probably man, he, has, yeah. he has so many stories that he still tells me. I, I actually, I was thinking about this yesterday and I was like, man, I should just do a train podcast where it's like train yeah. tales from pops. <laughs> Yo, and, that'd uh, be great. <laughs> Dude, you would crush uh, with like, you just, you could tour every nursing home. Like you could do live <laughs> podcast shows. That'd be so sick. Dude, you'd sell out so fast. Oh my God. I'd be huge with the boomers. It would just yeah. be so good. That's a million dollar I, I don't idea, know. dude. I don't know if boomers know what a podcast is, but if they do, I would be in it. I would just be, you could just it would be made. get an iPod doc that looks like an old ham radio and they'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> They're just oh, listening God. to their stories. Oh man. I, you know what? This really was some hot talk because I have it not, I haven't released so much laughter from my bed from deep within my belly in a oh, long time it feels time. good it feels good I, dude just to laugh it, it feels so good and you know what i feel like the water is warm now at when we first took the dive in actually it wasn't cold at all because you have just i don't know if you peed in the pool but it feels nice and warm from the start <laughs> i turned on the jets <laughs> okay okay well i may have peed in the pool so it's gonna get <laughs> somebody a little either warmer. way somebody's pissing <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so you know what i'm just gonna keep diving in to this Dive amazing in, episode man. awesome and i'm gonna paddle uh, i don't know what stroke i'm gonna do but the stroke is gonna be oh so technical as we dive into a comedy advice podcast where the host stefan satani aka me putting myself in third person don't know why but i am gonna bring a guest on tug them along and they might grab at my legs as we kick in this pool have some fun splash each other uh, but not too hard there's no you know horsing around that's that heavy but uh, we're gonna give some advice to some questions from reddit people are asking in an advice column in reddit and we're gonna answer it and the special guest today you guys may have heard the voice already i hope you knew that that just wasn't me talking to myself and this person is an incredibly talented comedian. Everybody, please 
welcome in your own way. I know we can't hear your claps, but if you're, you know, driving, maybe honk. If you're mowing the lawn, maybe run over something that's not grass to make a nice little noise. Casey Flesh, everybody. Clap, clap, clap. Oh, clap, clap, thank clap. you. Thank you. I really hope somebody's honking right now. Like, that's so funny. <laughs> Just honk for no reason. In fact, okay, if you're in your car right now, just honk on three okay ready one two three okay i hope everybody oh. honked that's so funny oh man that would be you know what? it would be so harmonious if there were two people that were listening to this podcast at the same time <laughs> they both honked they looked over at each other and they knew exactly <laughs> they were like yeah happened. yeah cool oh, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> oh, that'd they're be like so yeah funny. one more time for casey let's keep it going <laughs> incredible <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for having me, by the way. It's uh, it's nice to meet you. Oh, it's a pleasure, a pleasure to meet you as well. And I know that we've been swimming in this pool for about five minutes with our hot talk. Yeah. But I, Casey, I feel like I've known you, well, for five minutes, but it's been At a great least time. Five. <laughs> At least five <laughs> minutes, right? Yeah, I have that effect on people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's really good. And I wanted to say too, I am just enchanted with your stand up. I had the chance to listen and watch a little bit. I, I even commented on YouTube on your eight minute set where you just oh, is drill. That right? Yeah, you oh, drill you. into you. the nights in and the thirty dollar a night hotel. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a that that was a that's a pretty good joke. Like I that was just bor was born from truth. Like that I didn't I never wrote any of that joke. I just lived that night at that hotel and then had a show the next night. And that's where that came from and then I just tweaked it from there. I just oh, ranted. That is so good because I could feel the raw anger oh, coming yeah. from it's especially just with like the why are you you saw the the car with a tarp over it and you're like why <laughs> yeah. it's so, it's I don't so know, it's, uh, oh it's delicious absolutely it's incredible it's it was one of the worst places ever I think it was just outside <laughs> Milwaukee I think maybe where I will be in October hell yeah maybe I'll go stay there again Oh, very nice. Shout out. Maybe we'll uh, do an affiliate partnership deal. So everybody that oh. goes to the Knights Inn can get a, a little, we'll get a little cut from it. If you're in a Knights Inn parking lot right now, honk your horn. That's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're in a Knights Inn right now, remove the tarp from your vehicle <laughs> and then honk your horn. <laughs> okay. If you honk your horn in the night's in, depending on how many times you honk it, you're either going to get a sex worker or some drugs, maybe both. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like the in and out hidden menu for the <laughs> yeah. night's in. <laughs> Somebody's getting secret sauce for sure. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. I'm dying here. But Casey, <laughs> your, your stand up, I feel it's so good. I know you've performed across the country um i think you've even have you performed in phoenix at the house of comedy i was just there actually yeah in uh, july in july i was down there it was a great time that's a great club oh, i i love the club i actually i'm gonna do my first show there which is nice. gonna be yes very, very cool but i i love the place as well i'm very sad that i missed you i was in i think i was in um yellowstone in july okay. Yeah. Well, so it was yeah, I, I went to Phoenix the one week it rains. So I got 110 degrees with all the humidity you can imagine. <laughs> so it was it was pretty brutal. But man, the, the shows were a great time. That's such a great club down there. It was incredible. Everybody's so nice too. all the staff. They know how to like run a show and they just it, they care. It's it's great. Yeah, I hope they get back there as soon as they can. Oh, that's so cool. I, I wanted to ask because I I was listening to some other podcasts of yours and I just, I feel like I got the three dimension, a multi-dimension Casey, because there was okay. the anger from, from your, your stand up, and then also the playfulness and everything. And then I listened to some podcasts where you were talking about depression and, and things like that. And so sure. a, a very sad Casey as well. Um, but it, it just a full, maybe like a Skittles bag of Casey, because I just got all the flavors each okay. delicious and insightful in their own way. <laughs> okay, I but, like that. Uh, <laughs> but I, I wanted to ask, just 
just for the <laughs> for the fans, let's pop open another bag of Casey's Skittles. Sure. Whatever you when got. did you when did you start stand up? Uh, oh God, let's see. Uh, I that was started... a very disappointing question. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I was like, yeah, yeah, where are we going? And the question <laughs> everyone asks every time. Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Cause, cause I know you're in Minneapolis now. I know that right. you, you were also, I think when you had, had moved out, you went to Colorado, Colorado, I think 2013 was not a good year for you. A lot yeah. Of your yeah, dad yeah. was sick and um, my dad got I don't sick. My grandma, yeah. No, I mean like I had a bunch of shit happen. Uh, I, I actually started stand up right when I moved back home to Minneapolis from Colorado. So when I was out in Colorado, I had that uh, terrible fucking year that, uh, sorry, I don't know if you can swear, uh, that you terrible may. year. You may, yes. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, that terrible year uh, that you said, you know, my, my dad got really sick. Uh, my grandma died like right as my dad got better Then like my uncle died and my cousin died, like all within like, nine months of each other it was it was oh, brutal God. God. and then uh and then on top of that like a few months after that i just like straight up ran out of money in denver i was living out there for a while and uh had to move back home and like what like home what job home. did you oh man i was gonna ask what job did you have in denver was it something you uh, loved or no, I just, I like moved out there on a whim and ended up just like doing whatever I could find. So it was just like, I ended up working at a screen printing shop, which was like, was like printing t-shirts and stuff, which was like kind of fun, oh. but the pay sucked. Like my coworkers were awesome. And like, I had a decent time at work, which is like pretty hard to find usually. Yeah. Uh, but in the end, it just was too expensive to live out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my car ended up like breaking down like the engine just like blew up and had steam everywhere as i was like driving into the mountains one day and i was like well it's oh. probably about time to move home i guess i got no money left or oh. anything so i was just like All right. oh, no. oh no your car didn't like colorado then either that much no oh. no it was not a fan no it was oh. not it was a failed oh. experiment to like just see what happens if you move halfway across the country on a whim with like i think i had like eight grand in my checking account I was like let's do it <laughs> let's see what happens it didn't last very long it was like two and a half years i made it i think hey but well was, i mean uh, good for you first off that you made. well hold on let me just back up with the congratulations congratulations for doing something where I, at least you did it you failed, but at least you did it. What? Well, sorry, that chapter you failed. But like, <laughs> <laughs> you fucking blew it. Listen, you. I can't express enough how terrible that went for you. It was awful. But hey, you know you gave it a shot. Hilarious. <laughs> that that came off a little strong. I apologize about that. But no, I love it. I love it. That's fu so fucking funny. <laughs> but you, you you did something though where a lot of people I saw at friends and sometimes I do it where I'm like man I should just go out and like leave Arizona or I should just leave somewhere I mean same thing kind of happened with me I went and I moved to Jersey and that was not great for me it, it ended yeah. up getting I had to move back here and then I moved back there and the second time was a little better but the sure. first time I was like uh I don't really have that much money I was living with my aunt and uncle and um, yeah, it was just a, a weird time. But anyway, back to you. Cause uh, that, that was boring, but you, no, no, we can talk about you, it. dude. Come on. It was, it, the people <laughs> care. Honk your horn. If you want to hear more about Stefan's aunt. <laughs> I heard no honks. There were no honks. Oh, the, oh man. I was waiting for it. Well, <laughs> but uh, no, but back, back to you. I mean, you, you did it. And then you were like, you know what? It's not working out. I'm going to go back. And then I remember listening to one of the podcasts you were saying like the real lowest point, like a real low point for you was just close to 30 moving back in with your parents. And yeah. then stand up reared its lovely, beautiful head. Yeah. Yeah. I I was so like conditioned to hear people talk shitty about stand-up that when you just said lovely beautiful that i was like what like it stunned me 
I was like waiting for the right hook and then you hit the left jab out of nowhere. I was like, Ugh, uh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like uh. in reality, I mean, you know, like comedy sucks in so many ways, but it also can like change everything. And it like it rules it like it's the mm-hmm. best ever. Like, I still can't believe people give me money for it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's where I was. I mean, I moved back from Denver and I was like about to turn 30 uh, you know, living in my mom's basement. And then, uh, and then I heard somebody on like the radio say they tried an open mic somewhere. And I was like, well, I suppose, you know, I'll go watch and see what it looks like. And so I went down and, um, I watched an open mic and I was, I got like three people into it. And I was like, well, I can do that. You know, like it looks so easy. (laughs) And then, uh, yeah, I went I went down the next week, the following week and signed up and uh ended up uh ended up liking it a little bit. And that was about that was like seven years ago, almost seven years ago. Yeah, I'm about to be 37. Holy shit, I just said that out loud. That's crazy. But yeah, I'm about to be 37 in November. Wow. Congra I mean, congratulations. I'm not far behind. I'm 33. I'm gonna be 34. Ah, oh, you're still That's a baby. I love, I, I love how people people are 34 and they're like oh you're 33 you're a baby you've got you're an infant get out of here that's <laughs> hilarious oh i love that i love that. but i mean seven years i know people that have been doing comedy for seven years and they haven't toured the country i mean they haven't um really gone outside of their city or state so i think it's so cool that you were able to progress at the rate that you did and be able to come up with i mean your material speaks for itself it's it's hilarious yeah thank you yeah i mean like saying i tour the country is a little generous you know like i get around a little bit here and there um but you know it's not it's not like i'm out for like two or three weeks at a time i wish but uh uh yeah, yeah i mean Phoenix, uh, I just headlined the House of Comedy there on a like a Wednesday night. I did the headlining spot. And so that was nice. like a pretty big, pretty big goal of mine to headline a, a real club in a completely different region. Uh, so that was, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm trying to be humble as much as I can, but that was a pretty major thing for me to accomplish this summer. And I'm really, really pretty proud of how it all played out. Oh yeah, I mean this is this is not the podcast to be humble. This is where you toot your horn <laughs> as much as you want, as much as you I'm, need. Oh, I'm so bad at horn tooting, except in a car. <laughs> but it, like, it's just usually, I just I hate it, you know, because like I I you know it's like I said, like I'm not like touring the country. I'm not selling tickets or anything. But like, there is something right. to it, you know. Like if you just stick with it, and you're like not a complete moron, you can you can do it you know what i mean like you just got to be like a little bit funny and then not like piss everybody off and you'll be just fine <laughs> like that's all you gotta I, do it, i mean it's so funny man it's it's you're totally right i feel and i th- mm, I, I think i got it t- maybe i need to toot your horn that's the merch for a comedy advice podcast if you go to a comedy advice podcast.com we are selling starter toots and start okay horns. so <laughs> okay you can practice like i'm pretty good, good at this beep, beep. Good. but i like that. I, I i i also feel i mean i i just <laughs> i just hosted i don't really do stand up that much i'm more of a podcast okay. dude sure but occasionally i'll do stand up and i hosted five shows this last weekend at a comedy club in gilbert and it's nice. like a lineup each time of nine like eight different people and so i can kind of see like the ones that i'm like you know what they might not be the funniest but i see they work hard i see they're professional i see they're there on time um they're nice to me which i'm just a uh a meek host but uh, you know i think it speaks volumes and so then there are others jerks yeah i mean you gotta you gotta just be nice to everybody like at least at the beginning you know like because you're not you're not gonna like everybody that's another thing is like if you try to do stand-up there are gonna be people that you just don't get along with and that's fine you just don't cross paths you know like 
you're not going to get along with every single person you ever meet but the ones that you do get along with like just kind of like stick stick with them a little bit you know like kind of find your your little crew maybe it's one other person maybe it's five six other people but like just find find where you belong you know and keep searching until until you find it because it'll it shouldn't feel forced you know like if you're if you go to a a show or something everybody else is like having a good time and they're not like too friendly towards you like maybe that's not the room for you maybe you're at cross town you're in the group of everybody having fun you know like it's okay to just do your own thing and eventually people will will figure it out and like you'll find a spot you just gotta do be yourself and just figure out what you want out of other people and then it's pretty easy to find really the hard part is finding out what you want out of other people. Yeah, that's that's true. That's I mean, unless you're a complete asshole. Because Casey, you seem like true. a very nice gentleman. We've had a lovely conversation. Um, so you seem like a nice person that maybe, and, and you're right, there are some people, especially in comedy, personalities are very strong. So there might yeah. just be some people that you're not f- too fond of. Um, so I, I was going to say, Yeah, your advice is very solid. Unless you're an asshole, maybe don't be as much of an asshole. No, maybe just (laughs) be yourself. I don't know. What? Whatever. Yeah. Be you just you just got to be yourself, and that's and if you make a bunch of people mad or you know whatever, you don't vibe with some people, then you'll you'll find other people. Like there's always there's like seven billion people. Well, a little bit less after this whole pandemic thing, but you (laughs) you can find your people. You know. That's very true. There are 7 billion people on the planet and 6.9 billion are comedians. So I'm <laughs> yeah. sure. And they're on <laughs> this show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I was on a show. I was just on a showcase uh, for the Madison Comedy Week. And it's usually uh, it's usually where their open mic is. So they just instead of having an open mic, they just took that many comics from the festival and put them on this show. It was a Wednesday night at nine o'clock and there were 21 comics on the show. Oh my God. (laughs) But the thing is, it was packed the entire time and everybody loved it. It was incredible. It was so awesome. Because usually on a Wednesday, they usually have their open mic there, but this was like, heavy hitters from the festival and well and then me so then it was just like a bunch of like crazy comics and it was packed the whole night it was awesome it was so fun oh that is so cool that's god what an what an amazing lineup that's like the avengers it's just <laughs> 19 yeah. power hitters all in one movie wow i mean i wish i could have been there yeah awesome. it, it was awesome dude it was so fun Oh, uh, well, good. Well, Casey, I feel like we are primed and well, we're almost ready to give some advice. But okay, okay. Uh, before we do that, I like to get inspired. I'm getting there. I like I'm I'm almost fully stimmed with inspiration, but I want to just okay. get to the tip. I want to get fully there. And um, I like I'm an inspirational quote guy. So I like quotes. I've got one tucked deep inside my pocket. But before I pull it out, I like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes to get them through their dark days. Say their engine just blew up and they were in Colorado or. Mm -hmm. uh, Let me think. Or they have to stay in a night's inn. Yeah. uh, Well, my, my uncle, I mean, this is a classic quote that I assume everybody's dad or uncle has said at one point, but uh, my uncle always used to just say, uh, he goes, remember this in life, no matter where you go, there you are. And that was, his, <laughs> that was his big quote. So that's pretty inspirational. You know, I, mean, I it's like not, that. It's that's not original, almost... but it's nice. I, you know, I do like it though. It almost seems inspirational enough, like tattoo worthy. Maybe even you could <laughs> sure. build on the train where in the smoke that comes out of the stack, it could just oh. spell that out. That's a good idea. It could just, and it wouldn't even have to be the whole quote. It could just be like, there you are. And oh, there we go. Okay. Now we're thinking. This is good. Oh, man. This is fantastic. It was a pretty nice quote. I'll, I'll, I'll digest that for a good while. That's mm, keeping me full. I've got room for dessert, though. So I've got this quote that I have also, I found it from a robot 
called Inspirobot. And so okay. what, ins what Inspirobot does is if you go to inspirobot.io, there's this machine that just uses AI to generate inspirational quotes based off of all of the text that it finds across the internet. I okay. Guess. Okay. So I got you. Reddit, New York Times, um, comic books, QAnon. I don't know. Everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Anywhere. <laughs> Playboy articles. Anywhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the only thing that reads the articles. It's just anywhere. The robots. <laughs> All right. So this week, Inspirobot says, I'll read it and then you can let me know if it means anything to you, Casey. Okay. Okay. It says, it's time for you to stop watching and start complaining. I mm. love this. I love this. <laughs> you know, there's times in life that. when, yeah, like when you just, when you just kind of sit there and then like, you know, if you're listening to a podcast or something or, or reading quotes, like it seems like they're speaking directly to you. And that is what's happening here with this is like, you know, I've had enough of this just like looking at people and giving them a dirty look. I think I'm going to start. I think I'm going to start talking shit in public. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where we have to go, right? I think that, you know, they say the squeaky wheel gets the grease and yeah. I am so dry over here. I have no grease and I want to. Yeah. I want to get my fair share of lube. So I might as well squeak a little bit and start <laughs> right. complaining. See, that's what that's what I'm saying It's like, I think I think we need to start just complaining a little bit more. There's not enough. There's not enough. <laughs> yeah, the, the world is uh, it, it doesn't have enough complaints in there. So I feel like if we just just kickstart it a little bit, one little complaint. Imagine if everybody said exactly what they were thinking just all the time. How fucking funny would that be? Oh God, that sounds like Facebook, but yeah, I, <laughs> oh, that would be so good. Hey, welcome to Burger King. You're fat as fuck. You should go somewhere else. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, the, um, hi, welcome to Burger King. What can I give? Oh, no, nope, you're, I'm not supersizing that order. You look like you had enough. <laughs> I'm getting you the salad. Hi, welcome to Burger King. I'm sorry. We don't serve you. Just whatever you are. <laughs> we just don't serve you. Well, welcome to Burger King. We have it my way. And <laughs> that means you outside. So scram. Welcome to God. Burger King. There's 40 people in line behind you. But by all means, have me explain every menu item. One thing at a time. <laughs> it's fucking Burger King. You've been here. I feel like you and I both have some PTSD from Burger King. I don't know. <laughs> I think <if> so. so. <laughs> oh, my God. Welcome to Burger King. I'm going to forget five items from your order. Don't worry. <laughs> the, uh, I used to live in one of the bad parts of Minneapolis. And, uh, I, like, Burger King was one of the only places that was open on the way home from, like, shows or whatever. And I, I must have went there, like, 15 times over the two years that I lived there, they uh -huh. never once got my order right. Never once. And it was incredible. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I got like less and I was like, what the hell? Oh man, I just lost like four bucks or whatever. But also other times I got like way more. So like it all evened <laughs> out. It was so funny. I just, whatever. I was just like, here, I'll just give you some money. You give me whatever you feel like you want to give me and we'll call it a day. And it worked so well. <laughs> that burger king sounds kind of like god it's just like yeah, you never know awesome. what to expect you, i you can... never would have ordered like a chicken whopper but they're pretty good <laughs> ordering at the menu is like praying and you're like i'll see what i get and then uh it's not exactly what you wanted but it's it's what you needed i guess <laughs> it I makes me want to do that everywhere else now like just go in and be like here's 10 bucks just give me whatever you think i would like based on the 10 seconds you've known me because i'm gonna fucking eat it i'm gonna eat it either way like you're gonna give me the wrong order and i'm gonna complain this is where complaining should not happen if you're at fast food just just eat it just eat whatever they gave you it doesn't matter 
I dude, I, I actually I strongly agree with that because what's there on the menu that's not fucking delicious? I mean, it's and it's all unhealthy. It's not. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. I I agree with you a hundred percent. Just eat it. Just Plus, fucking. It's eat not it. like if you order a triple whopper, they're gonna accidentally give you like a salad. You're gonna get a sandwich. Like yes. Just just eat your shit. Just shut up and just eat your shit. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> That should be on the receipt instead of thank that's, you. It's just like, just shut up and eat your shit. Okay. God. That's my merch. That's my merch at my next show. <laughs> oh my God. Well, Casey, I don't know about you, but I feel fully inspired. So I, feel I think like, we're there. Yeah. I think we're there. Awesome. Let's dive into these questions. Okay. So this first one, it says, what's a good thank you gift for a friend who has fuck you money? A wealthy friend volunteered to put up some family members of mine who evacuated from New Orleans. After they got back, I obviously need to get them a gift of appreciation. What is a good, affordable gift for someone who can buy anything they want? I would get a nice bottle of booze, but the husband doesn't drink. Hmm. Huh. Huh. Okay. Well, probably books then if he's a fucking nerd. Doesn't even drink. <laughs> And then just like a nice thank you note that's like, just read your shit, okay? <laughs> just, just read your shit, dude. Just fucking read your shit. <laughs> Man, I, that's, a, that's a tough question, though, because like I am one of the worst people when it comes to gifts and all that kind of shit. Like, I, don't, I, I hate giving them. I hate getting them. I hate everything about like a thank you gift. It's like, can I just say thanks? Like, <laughs> it's fine. But I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> I I really liked Casey the book idea. I feel like you could give that there are so many books out there and I feel like even if they don't read it, they'll put it in a place where people would be like, "Oh, you're smart. Yeah. You read books." So You know what? Yeah. I I I did that on purpose. Yeah, I totally meant to just say books and I wasn't making a joke <laughs> at all. Yeah. Cuz that is true though. Everybody reads. Yeah. Ex exactly. It's different shit but you know they'll read whatever so <laughs> yeah. i like the books i another thing um maybe you could get them something really cool like we were talking about earlier in the episode your grandpops had a little train city yeah. where you could kind of just stand there and it would go around i don't think anyone has those anymore so if you've got I, one of those oh, man. i haven't seen one in years i don't i mean we sold my grandpa's when he died but like i don't even know what they did with it like maybe just parted it out and turned it into like a tesla or something but I don't, it was like that would be a pretty cool thing like if he's got all that money he could like buy a real train though you know and just have that in oh that's he or true. she but sorry, then probably but Women then can he'll be get tinnitus too. yeah <laughs> that, that's true that's true <laughs> he will get tinnitus they will get tinnitus that's and then you can steal their money when they're sleeping because they're not going to hear you. Nice. No, okay, I was going to go the same direction. That's I like. Perfect. Got a little See. den of thieves right here. I feel like you yeah, and I, we could pull up heist. Yeah, something's going on. I think we, okay, we can't talk about this with microphones, but next time I'm in, I'm in Phoenix, I'm going to come down there. We're going to heist. We're going to plan a heist. I Operation Heist Heist Baby, I think is oh, going to be the first. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Although it kind of sounds like we're going to steal a baby, and I don't want to get a baby. Oh, a little so. bit, yeah. How about ice ice diamonds? How about that? <laughs> oh, I like it. Doesn't have the ring to it, but it has. Right, it's got my attention because the diamonds mm -hmm. much more valuable than a baby. I mean, depends well, on. I mean, depends. Yeah, ask. it depends on the baby, I suppose. That's true. That just and like a clarity. diamond. There are also there are also mm -hmm. babies, and you know, there's the ethics of it. There are blood babies. There yeah. are normal <laughs> there are blood, babies. Blood babies as well. <laughs> Where'd you get this one? I pulled them out of a river in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Oh. Okay. Blood oh baby. no. All right. The tears. Well. All right. We're gonna. So I guess we're... books. Uh... That's I think we've landed answer. on that one. We're gonna we're gonna bookmark <laughs> that question with that answer. <laughs> okay. So right. books it is. <laughs> All right. This last question, Reddit. It says, <clears throat> "Is this cheating slash a date, or am I overthinking it?" 
this is a long one, so I'm going to try and skip where okay. I think yeah. it's. Okay, sure. I'm going to use my discretion. So when the pandemic to... started, I had a. Go ahead. No, I'll try to follow along. Okay, you just made it long. Long, but long. Thanks. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm so... ready. Okay, ready. Take a deep breath. Ready, everybody. Honk. One, two, three. Honk and start. Ah, so when the pandemic started, I had a lot of people talking to me on dating apps. A lot of them just became cordial with me. One of those people was a professional athlete in the country I was relocating to for school. But while take, talking to the athlete, it was never consistent over that year and a half. It was just polite hellos. I met my now boyfriend. Since I relocated to the country, I'm going to school now. The athlete asked to grab a bite as he's also leaving the country and doesn't have time, especially before school starts for me. So I'm assuming this is a one-time thing. He's always been polite, never crossed boundaries, or gave off any vibes that he expects anything from me. My social media does imply that I have a boyfriend. So when this was first brought up, I assumed it just means grab a bite as it took over a year for me to get to the same area. My boyfriend thinks it's fine if I grab a bite with him, but something feels off about this. And I think it's because I have a history of collecting dates with men that have sparkly backgrounds. Basically, I can't tell if I'm overthinking or not. Hmm. And that's it. Hmm. I don't think it ended with a question. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so she just needed to tell someone. That she's having lunch with an athlete, I guess. <laughs> this is an example of tooting your own horn. This is how it works. Because <laughs> you know what athlete means, right? That means like, that's like, uh, like how you say like, this person has like a hot body. Like, that's what it is. Like, without sounding like a fucking perv. You know, you can't be like, well, this dude's got, he's fucking jacked and he's so hot. Oh my God. But she's like, he's an athlete with like, if you could see her when she says that, she like shrugs. She's like, he's an athlete, you know? And you're like, she, you can see her like be turned on instantly. So they're going to fuck you at a Wendy's and it's going to be, <laughs> I think, I mean, it, that's probably, it's not cheating if they just like, obviously just have dinner, but. I don't know. It sounds like she wants to hook up with him, doesn't it? It sounds like she's thinking about it so much that the, the desire is buried deep within. Or maybe it's really just right off the surface, like a volcano about to erupt. I can see the smoke already. She's just waiting for this opportunity. And she's like, wait, is it good? Is it good? Is it good? And then they're going to bang in the Wendy's and yeah. he's going to. They're, he's gonna frosty and she's gonna <laughs> i don't know nugget i don't know uh there's a joke in there about biggie size i think but i don't know if they do oh that damn it oh yeah biggie size god damn oh well whatever wasted opportunity i'm sorry uh, but anyway <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> no, but well, I, is she like go like she's like asking our permission like it's up to her if it's cheating like it has nothing to do with that like you can have dinner with somebody it doesn't it's, that's not cheating you know like right. you're right. jerking them off under the table still questionable like St <laughs> depends on your partner i guess yeah yeah i agree i mean hand, maybe hand stuff at a wendy's especially if it's at a wendy's it depends on, there's a time and a place and so right. I feel that if as long as you don't kiss, it's okay. Yeah, that's actually yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, if as soon as you kiss, it's cheating, and then you're you're out. But you can do whatever you want if you don't if you don't smooch. Yeah, yeah, it's, you got to be smooch free. I like the yeah. athlete metaphor. You're out you, if you smooch. <laughs> yes, good. you're out. Good. <laughs> nice, nice tie in. Oh, man. All right. Well, I feel like we have laid out a bountiful cornucopia of wisdom. And I feel like it's now everybody that has honked their horns, yes. giggled, and um, hopefully put their lawnmower back safely in the shed. Probably. Can, yeah, yeah, I think so. They can now feast on all of this delicious, this delicious wisdom. But Casey. I just wanted to say before we part ways, thank you so much for joining. This was an absolute Oh, thank blast. you. Thank you. I would love to come back anytime. I don't know if you ever repeat guests or whatever, but you know, let's do it. Who cares? No, we never talk again. Uh, I'm just okay, going to shut the good, door. Good. No, I would. No, I, I would, would like love, that actually. I, I would love, you know, I feel like we would be, if I was in Minneapolis, I feel like we might be pals. We might yeah, be. I agree. 
I agree. It would be, be fun. That, it would be fun. Maybe you should. I don't know if I'm ready to move to Minneapolis, but if you want to come to no. Arizona, I'm I'm looking I'm looking for a way out of Minneapolis. I'll, I'll you know I'll think about it. We'll see what happens next time I'm in Phoenix. We're gonna we're gonna get lunch at a Wendy's and watch these ladies fucking athlete. I, I was going to say, be careful. I am an athlete, so I don't know. <laughs> what, you, okay, what kind of that. athlete are you? <laughs> Bowling doesn't count. Oh, damn. Okay, well, that was it. I, I have the body of a bowler, and uh, <laughs> I like, oh, damn. If that's not a t-shirt, that should be some merch. Body of a bowler. I was on the bowling team in high school. No joke. 100% true. No. Did you score any 300s? No, but my uh, best friend in high school, he's got like seven of them. He's really good. I was just on the team because they needed another body so they could have enough people to play a whole bowling team or whatever. Oh, my gosh. Well, hey, you know what? It's You were on it, and that counts. I was not on Big time team. memory. What, kind of, what sport do you play? Uh, I don't. I was lying. I'm not an athlete. Oh, I do. damn I, it. Because you do I kind do. of look like an athlete. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. You know what? Maybe th- th- that hand job might come to play. At the, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That kidding. letter was kidding. about you. That was just a no. <laughs> no, but in high school, I was a swimmer. And okay. I, um, what else did I do? I wrestled for a hot minute. And then I was like, this is not for me. And then I played soccer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Soccer. Nice. Nice. I played baseball yeah. till I was like 19 or whatever, but I didn't really enjoy it. I just played it because I was supposed to, it felt like. But it was, you oh, know, it was nice. fine. Nice. It was nice. all right. Well, well, hey, let's um let, let me throw you this pitch. What case yeah. do you have to plug? Where can people follow you? What have what have you got going on? Uh you can follow me. Uh basically any of my social media is just my name, just Casey Flesh. Uh, my last name is spelled F L E S C H, uh, anywhere like Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Um, as far as, uh, is this, when is this coming out? Do you know, does it come out? Is it live? Oh God, we're live right now. It's a, yeah, we're, oh God, no, 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 we're not live. (laughs) We are in the comfort of dead air and this will come out in approximately two weeks. Okay. Okay. Uh, in two weeks, I will just have gotten back from the Omaha Comedy Festival down there in Omaha. Uh, so if you uh, missed that, sorry, should have been there. Uh, then I have <laughs> Milwaukee, Milwaukee coming up. The Milwaukee Comedy Festival. I'll be there Friday, uh, October eighth, I believe, at the Laughing Ooh. Tap in Milwaukee. And then I think they're going to add another one on that Saturday with me on it as well for the Milwaukee Festival. Um, then a couple of things in Minneapolis coming up, just little, a uh, little like house shows and a, a little fundraiser thing up in uh, up near Grand Forks, North Dakota, on I, I believe September fifteenth or something like that. So maybe right around when this comes out, uh, if you're oh, in nice. Grand Forks, come and honk your horn at me. Yes, honk those horns, people. And guess what? That's going to be all in the show notes. I believe on your website, you've got the tour dates, and I'll include a link to that. Yeah. And um, perfect, perfect. And uh, as well as all the socials so people can follow you. Yep, awesome. it's all out there. It's all out there to be found if you want to find it. So all you got to do is complain and honk. <laughs> That's it. it. Oh, Casey Flesh, everybody. What a treat. What a gem. What a little sapphire. What a, an opal. I haven't used that one before. He opaled my eyes and to a lot of things. And I felt like it was just a great time. I hope he thought, I hope you thought that it was a good time as well, because you're here at the end of the podcast. This is it guys. Um, Please exit the vehicle here and, you know, don't steal the shampoo, please. No, no, it's, it's for you. You can take it. That's totally fine. That's part of the price, the package deal. Oh, wait, it's free. So if you are feeling like supporting in other ways, subscribe, leave a review, join the Facebook group, join, uh, follow on Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, and Trash or Treasure, October 19th. It's coming up soon. Get your tickies, your little ticks, your tickets. Um, what's a good sounding abbreviation for tick tickets? Tit, tit, 
tick ticks tick ticks nope that doesn't sound good that sounds like a parasite that i've got in my stomach so anyway get the tickets and guys don't forget to have a pleasant day please for me just remember my voice whenever you're feeling down and uh remember my voice telling you stop being a bitch and that's all thank you guys so much love you Mwah, big gooch smooch. <laughs>